Hey your bubble buddies! So today I'm going to talk to you guys about The Scorch Trials by James Dasher, which is book two in the Maze Runner trilogy. Now if you guys saw my video about book one, you might remember that I was kind of apathetic about this book series. I was really looking forward to it, but it was just so-so. I thought it was due to the fact that the protagonist was a guy, and he, I couldn't really get inside of his mind and understand his thoughts or relate to him as well as I do with the strong female protagonist like the Katniss or the Beatrice, but I am so glad I decided to stick with this series because book two is incredible. Way better than book one in my opinion, which is very rare for a trilogy to have the second book be better than the first book, but I definitely enjoyed this one more and it moved faster and there was a lot more happening and it had me on the edge of my seat, metaphorically speaking, because I was laying down while reading this book. But yeah, it was super, super good and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. So at the end of book one, we discover that these kids were placed in this maze by this group of people called Wicked who were out to try to find a cure for this thing called the flare, which basically people got it and it affected your brain and made you go crazy and like the entire world's population was dying. And so these kids were basically like lab rats and the people who were organizing this thing were trying to test their brain patterns to find a cure for the flare. And so these kids escaped the maze and were taken away by these other people to this like place where they thought that they were safe. But in book two, we discover that this place that was seemingly a safe haven isn't a safe haven. The people who took them from the group of people called Wicked were killed and all these people were like, oh no, these people are killed and we can't get out of the safe haven. We're locked in and Teresa's been kidnapped and replaced with this other guy and what are we gonna do? And there are these evil, crazy people called the Cranks who were hit with the flare who are trying to reach in through the windows. I mean, talk about a scary situation. They didn't have any food or anything and so they're wandering around for a while wondering what to do when this guy suddenly shows up and all this food suddenly shows up. And so this guy, finally he decides to talk and he tells them that this is stage two of their whole trials to try to figure out a cure for the flare. And what was going to happen was they were going to be sent out into the desert and they were going to have to navigate the way through the desert to find this place where they would get the cure to the flare. And so that was their next step. And these kids had no memory of being out in the real world. Their first memory, remember, was being in the elevator, being lifted up into the maze because they had a complete brain wipe. And so this was their first time out in the real world as far as they could remember. And they were out in the desert you know, around the flare with the cranks, the crazy people who were trying to like steal their noses because they didn't have noses. It's like, it, it was pretty bizarre. Um, but it's kind of cool because we actually discovered that there was a boy's maze and a girl's maze. And so essentially every single thing that happened in the first book with the maze runner or with the boys also happened with the girls. And how Teresa was sent to the boy's maze, there was actually a boy who was sent to the girl's maze and he could read minds too. And it's, th there were a lot of variables and a lot of tests to try to analyze their brain patterns. And Teresa, after she's kidnapped, there's a lot of stuff that happens with her and Thomas. And we also meet another girl named Brenda, who Thomas kind of finds himself falling for because Teresa's not there. They also get tattoos in this book. Um, and it's, again, another one of those variable things. Like, one is called um, the glue, and he's the one that holds the group together. Another one is labeled as the leader, and Thomas is actually labeled as to be kidnapped killed by group B. And so that was his tattoo. He is labeled to be killed by the girls group. And so that is what he thinks his fate is throughout this entire book. And I mean, it's a great book. Like I can't even begin to explain how awesome this book is. It was very unexpected and there was a lot of, it, it was very easy to visualize and I could relate to the characters and I was rooting for them and it was so different than book one. Book one was okay, but I mean, I just, I felt like I was trapped in that maze too. But maybe it's just the fact that they were actually going towards a goal out, you know, free outside of this maze that I enjoyed this book more. Maybe the first book made me feel claustrophobic trapped inside of it or something. You really wanted to know what was happening with this wicked group. Is it good? Is it bad? And you wanted to know what was going to happen between Teresa and Thomas. You wanted them to find this cure because you didn't want them to go crazy because the cranks were really eerie. They had this weird little thing like, Rose took my nose, I suppose it blows, you know, like because they, when they go crazy, like they lost their noses and they were trying to get other people's noses because they thought it would make them better. Like, I mean, that was a little bit eerie. Um, but it, it, the, the, uh, oh, good. It, it was great. Like, I'm I'm very glad that I stuck with this series through the second book. And I've actually finished the third book, so I know what happens, and I don't want to give too much away. But, yeah, leave a comment below.
below letting me know if you read this series and what you thought of the second book, and I will see you guys very soon. Ciao. <laughs>